Aliens, aliens are coming after your ethernet cable, but not mine. Hey there, YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable, and hopefully that introduction or that little hook there got your attention, because it should. We have a cool new little device here. It is our three-dimensional CAT 6A unshielded wall-mounted patch panel, and this is the overview and installation guide. And we're gonna get into all sorts of stuff. Stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, so I thought we would first start off with an unboxing, just a quick unboxing. So what you've got <clears throat> is a cute little uh, uh, QR code card that takes you to the uh, instruction sheet for the patch panel, which is online. We don't print it and put it in the box. And we also have an installation kit. We have two drywall anchors and two Phillips head screws. And so you have a couple of options to, to drywall mount or you can mount directly to a backboard. Uh, for this patch panel. And the patch panel itself, so the patch panel comes like this, so what you do is you reverse it, and you have the 89D bracket, and you have the actual patch panel frame itself. The patch panel frame accommodates 12 category, up to category 6A keystone jacks, unshielded. So the patch panel frame can either be mounted on the outside, or you can also use the two center screws, you can even use the center uh, mounting holes for installation directly onto a uh, floor standing rack unit, which is uh, something that's quite interesting. Okay, so that's essentially the unboxing portion, so let's talk about some of the features. Okay, so in general, wall mount patch panels are something that you can put essentially anywhere. You can mount them on drywall, you can mount them directly to a backboard, and it's only 12 port and you don't need a floor standing rack or anything like that. So they can fit pretty much anywhere. But the big advantage to patch panels is they organize your structured cabling into one spot and you can label them and terminate your uh, cable to keystone jacks or otherwise known as IDC style terminations, which are far superior than if you were terminating everything to APHC, AKA RJ45 plugs, which you don't really want to do a solid copper ethernet. So the patch panel not only helps you obtain high performance, it keeps you organized, it keeps you structured, and it, your installation will be easier to troubleshoot and to expand uh, in the future. Okay, so what essentially separates True Cable's Category 6A patch panel from other patch panels currently on the market? Because you can pick these up pretty much anywhere, correct? Well, it's a keystone panel, so it's easy in, easy out, easy cable uh, replacement. If your uh, other style patch panel, that being the punch down, style, the punch down kind, uh, which you have a video on, uh, differences between uh, various types of patch panels, feed through, keystone, and punch down. Uh, the punch down kind is known as a monolithic panel. So if something goes wrong with it, it goes wrong for the whole panel usually. So you have to replace the entire panel and then you have to reinstall all your cable to it. With this, it's if you have a, a keystone that in the unlikely event should go bad, um, well, it's just simple one keystone replacement, not all of them. And you don't have to play with all your cable at the same time. Uh, another thing is that uh, we designed this particular panel to be uh, offset. And it's got an offset mount, and what that means is that the bracket is a little bit taller than uh, you typically see with other brackets. And the way the panel frame sits on the bracket basically ensures that your keystones have a lot of depth before you get to the wall. So there's a, there's a lot of uh, breathing room in here for cable bend radius and things like that. You could literally have a situation where, you're, where you're, uh, uh, you're, all your cabling coming down could be putting so much pressure because of the turn uh, at the keystones that it could push the panel frame right off the bracket. Have you ever had that happen to you? Put it down in the comments if you have. I, I've had it happen a few times. So that happens with the short depth brackets uh, and, and patch panels. That, that's not going to happen with ours. 
The other thing that really separates our panel though from um, other panels on the market is it's category 6A component rated. Now, the main problem with category, uh, well, with 10 gigabit uh, networking with unshielded cable, and there's many benefits to using unshielded cable, is that there's crosstalk that can occur uh, from one cable to the next inside the same cable bundle. That's called alien crosstalk or annexed or annexed, however you want to pronounce it. And so essentially, uh, you, one cable starts stepping on another is what happens. So how do you fix that? Well, you can either install all shielded cable, uh, which would be expensive. You have to bond it to ground. Uh, it, it's heavier to work with. There, it has a very big bend radius on it, so it's not the easiest stuff to install, especially Cat 6A shielded. It's a lot easier to work with unshielded, but you still want your 10 gigabit. Well, actually, rumor has it, and I cannot confirm it with empirical data yet, but uh, the talk is that even 5 gigabit networking using Cat 6 can generate sufficient alien or cable-to-cable -cable crosstalk that you may have an issue uh, with your uh, network performance. So it's not just 10 gigabit. It used to be just 10 gigabit, 10 gigabit you would hear this about. But 5 gigabit and above appears to be that, that new bar. So this is a phenomenon that it's typically occurring at 350 megahertz or higher. And that's when cable to cable crosstalk starts to become an issue. And well, category six, it gets driven to five gigabit is liable to actually get to that point and then end up uh, going over that 350 megahertz number or getting close to it. So uh, what we did is we scientifically designed this with a three dimensional stagger. And it offsets the keystone in three different dimensions so that the uh, electromagnetic bubble of interference around each keystone does not actually cause interference with the adjacent keystone. And so you end up with a network where at the keystone, at, at the panel itself, you're not going to have what's known as alien crosstalk issues, and therefore no aliens attacking your network, which is a good thing, a very good thing. Uh, so some other items about our panel, uh, it's fully backward compatible with CAT6 and CAT5e. The, the main thing is unshielded. So this is not a panel that you use with shielded cable. There's no provision to bond it to ground, and this is not designed to handle shielded keystones. I mean, its depth is more than sufficient for it, but you don't want to mount shielded keystones in this thing. So category 5E, 6, 6A, um, even 7 or 8, if you can, get, if you can find keystones that, that, that are unshielded for those two categories, which you probably won't. But uh, for 10 gigabit, ne 10 gigabit networking using unshielded CAT 6A cable, or even CAT 6 at 5 gigabit, this is the solution that's going to prevent uh, a, a new phenomenon from encroaching upon your network. And I say new, not new necessarily to the market or to the in industry, but certainly new to perhaps home installers, DIYers, things like that. People who uh, have been operating at maybe one gigabit all this time, and you're just beginning to get like 2.5 gigabit, 5 gigabit, and things like that. Or people with higher bandwidth needs. Uh, for example, pushing raw 4K, 8K video across to your network, that takes a lot of bandwidth. So you might start thinking about 10 gigabit networking, CAT 6A. So that pretty well are all the features in a nutshell. And that's what separates our panel from everybody else's panel out there. It's specifically designed to head off that interference issue. And it handles really thick unshielded cable without causing the panel to literally fly off the bracket at the wall. So there, you're not going to find any other panel like this. All right, so now that we've kind of covered all of the ins and outs of the panel and you know what comes in the box, I think it's probably time we start talking about how to install it. Be right back. All right, thanks everybody for sticking with me to this point. Uh, this is the actual installation portion of our video. So we're going to first kind of talk about the tools you need and some of the stuff I've already pre-done here so that you understand what's going on. Uh, essentially, the uh, wall mount patch panel, you separate out of the box. This, these are two separate pieces. This is the actual panel. 
and this is the mounting bracket. It's called an 89D mounting bracket. And this is what actually gets mounted to the wall. And what we're gonna do is you need to have a marking tool, a level, and either a 1 8 drill bit for pre-starting holes into a backboard, or a 5 16 drill bit if you wish to mount into drywall. So if you're gonna put it in a drywall, uh, you would use the uh, 5 16 bit to pre-drill for your uh, drywall anchors that are supplied with the product. So as you probably noticed in your box, you've got pre-supplied screws and pre-supplied drywall anchors. So again, 1 8 if you're pre-drilling for the screw by itself, no drywall, into a backboard. And then 5 6 or 5 16 for your drywall anchor, pre-drilling for that. And a Phillips bit because these are Phillips head screws, standard sized. The first step is your cable is already coming in and what I've got going on here, I already pre-terminated these links to make the video a little faster and so it wouldn't you know, take forever. This is not a keystone termination video, although if you do want to see that, we actually have a how to terminate a tool or a tool, terminate a punch down keystone jack video. Uh, but we've got some category cable in, it's unshielded and there's five drops and drops are run, same thing. And we're going to populate about half of the patch panel and then we're going to take care of plugging the holes uh, that are left over with some of our uh, inserts, the blank inserts. They're called blank keystone inserts. So because it's unshielded uh, Ethernet cable and you're, you're going to want to turn it into a circle eight pattern. And so I've already got that done and I'm using uh, four J hooks here in order to accomplish the circle eight. And there's various ways of going about it. You can also use Velcro straps to fashion one. But the reason behind that is to help prevent interference, uh, not only with the cable, uh, one cable to the next, uh, but also uh, when it comes to uh, radio frequency interference, it turns out that circles are an excellent uh, antenna. And so you don't wanna have a circle, you wanna have a figure eight pattern. And these drops will come down into the patch panel and then we'll be able to uh, clip these keystones in and basically off you'll go. So let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Okay, so to make this as simple as possible, the easiest way to go about this is uh, when you're dressing your cables in, you're not gonna already have terminated keystone jacks. So what you'll do is you're going to cut these guys to length. And the easiest way to do that is to bring the cables down and then poke them through and then cut at the very front of the panel and then back the cable out and then terminate to your keystone jack. So that's gonna probably be the quickest way to dress the cables in so that they're even and you have an even amount of cable between here and your service loop. Okay, so, to insert the keystone jacks, it's quite simple. You're gonna put them in on an angle. You'll notice a triangular piece of plastic at the bottom of the jack. And then there's a clip on the top. So the clip should be facing to this direction, to the, to the right of the True Cable logo. So what you're gonna do is put it in at an angle, so it hooks in there like so, and then lift up until it snaps. Just as simple as that, snap in and snap out. And don't worry if it pops out of your service lip holes, that's okay. You can readjust that at any time. Okay, so as you can see, we ended up with a little more slack at the top of the panel than we expected, and that's okay. Um, what you do is you, basically, you're gonna play with your service slack here and just readjust it. And once you have your service slack where you want it, you can go ahead and start using Velcro straps, not zip ties or nylon ties, in order to keep the cable bundled and in place. Okay, so we've applied a few nylon straps. Obviously, you can keep playing with it until it looks perfect. It's completely up to you as to how organized and neat it is. Just, again, make sure you're using the nylon straps. 
are the hook and loop straps, uh, otherwise known as Velcro straps, and not actual nylon ties. The nylon ties can actually squeeze the cables together, compress the jackets, which can cause cable damage and also performance degradation. And that is literally defeating exactly what this panel is designed to help defeat, which is alien crosstalk, cable to cable crosstalk. All right, so now that your patch panel is actually installed, um, you're gonna wanna fill up any of the blank spots. And so the way to do that is with keystone inserts and True Cable sells these as well. They're really easy to work with. All you do is snap them in and they fill up a spot and they snap in in the same direction as the keystones. And this is normally easier to do once you've actually got the, <laughs> you know, as opposed to before you've actually snapped the panel to the 89D bracket, but uh, this will give you an example. As you can see, it's simply snap, and that's it. Simple to do. And then you just continue filling the holes until they're all filled up, and then when you want to have another drop, you'll bring it through, create your service slack, bring it down, terminate, and you'll take out any of these blanks that you've already got installed. So, uh, that pretty well uh, sums it up. We covered exactly why uh, True Cable introduced this patch panel and that it's a long depth mount or it's got more depth to it. As you can see from the, uh, the end of the keystones uh, to where the wall starts, this panel has quite a bit more offset from a wall than your typical uh, patch panel does. And that was by design. We wanted a, a panel that was easy to work with and, and also permitted you to have the proper bend radius for the cable and not and I've literally used patch panels in the past that would push themselves right off the frame uh, because of the, the pressure from the cable jacket, and that, that's not good. You, know, you want it to stay on the frame, obviously. So this will stay on the frame, and it's protected against alien crosstalk because of the 3D stagger pattern. Is, and so at this point, uh, you have a, a well-organized installation. You can label your ports. You plug in uh, component rated patch cords into a switch and you're up and running. You're ready to go, uh, assuming your other end of your network's done too. But that's another video. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, now you know why True Cable's patch panel is designed the way it is, how to install it, and how to ward off an alien attack. Uh, you don't want aliens attacking your ethernet. So please uh, give us a thumbs or a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you see fit. Leave a comment below. Give us some uh, experiences you've had. Please subscribe to our channel. And with that, I'm going to say, happy networking. Quick, before the time runs out, if you enjoyed this video, head to our website below, check out our Cable Academy. If you're looking for some new videos, check them out next to me. Thanks for watching.